sitting in front of my bookshelf in an attempt to make myself look more literary and like I'm qualified to do this. Last night, around 2 o'clock in the morning, I finished reading this book, How to Lead a Life of Crime by Kristen Miller. And it is probably one of my favorite books now. The book is about a boy named Flick who comes from a wealthy family and he was really privileged growing up but his dad was kind of an asshole and Flick ended up on the streets stealing and pickpocketing to survive until he gets picked up by this guy named Mandel who tells him he's offering him a spot at the Mandel Academy which Flick knows is this big prestigious school that his dad went to and he doesn't really want to go because he doesn't want to follow in the footsteps of his dad but Mandel kind of makes him an offer he can't really refuse. When he gets there, he realizes it's the school where they're basically teaching them to be criminals. The longer Flick's there, though, he realizes something's not really right about the school. And it turns into this bigger picture of crime and murder and betrayal. And there's so many things that happen that I can't tell you about without spoiling the whole book. I heard about this book last year around December. This didn't come out till this February so I've been waiting for it for a couple months now and when I read the description of the book it sounded like something I would like because this is gonna sound horrible. I'm really into like serial killers and crime and stuff. When I read the description it seemed kind of like kitschy and quirky and like it'd be funny and cute and then I checked out the book. It is none of those things. This book is so dark and brilliant and it it took me somewhere I didn't even expect it to take me. As clearly displayed on my lovely bookshelf, I'm a huge fan of dystopian novels. This one's a dystopian novel but not in the way we've become accustomed to. Books like The Hunger Games and Divergent and even Robin Wasserman's Cold Awakening series, there's this one teenager who's trying to take on the world because the world has already changed and they're trying to get it back to where it used to be. In this book, the main characters are trying to prevent that, which is really refreshing because as much as I love Divergent and The Hunger Games and series like that, it's kind of getting trite. Another thing I really liked about it is it's a standalone book. This isn't part of a series. I don't have to wait for book two to figure out if Flick survives or what's going to happen. You can sit down and read it in one shot and it's over. And that's just, it's so, it's so nice to have that in this world of series in which we are living. Basically, what I'm saying is this book exceeded my expectations. It has brilliant characters, great development, the plot is original and well written and dark and beautiful. Everything about it was so good and I would absolutely recommend this book to everyone. As a matter of fact, I'm going to buy it, which those who know me know it's a big deal because I don't buy many books. I check them out from the library and I only buy books when I really love them and want to force them on other people. And this is one of those books. <laughs> I think the bookshelf did help because I think that was probably my most professional review so far, guys, I might be getting the hang of this. Probably not.